Hi everyone, Aaron here from Space Tech. Um, today I'm going to be demonstrating um, how our flat roof uh, Starlink conversion goes together, our flat mount. Um, so as a lot of you may already know, there's plenty of uh, different um, ways this can be done and plenty of different versions of a, a cutback standard dish uh, flat mounted. Um, it's a service uh, Space Tech offer, so if you're interested, give us a ring. It's not something we put on our website, uh, just because we've um, got a huge amount of demand uh, for this product. So um, we've already had uh, our dish cut. We've done that in, in our machine. That's been cut flat, ready uh, to go in this housing. This is the underside of the housing, um, which has been uh, CNC routed out of a solid piece of plastic um, and it's got a few uh, design features others don't have. One is um, it is mounted from underneath which makes it a lot harder for our water ingress uh, as well as uh, a double o-ring seal here um, one on the inside one on the outside and to uh, uh, also propel water uh, we put a rubber grease in between these two seals uh, which helps repel any water that might come in through the screws. So first of all, um, we're going to prepare the, uh, the flat dish to go uh, inside. Um, so what we do is um, we have uh, this uh, adhesive uh, rubber. So we've just um, put a piece of this on each corner. What this does is um, gives it some grip so it doesn't just flop around inside the casing. Um, it actually sandwiches with the, um, the backing plate, which you'll see later. But also it puts a small air gap between the two surfaces, just uh, helping with cooling properties and uh, radiant heat from the sun. Now, once that's all done, we just drop that in this side. And again, some more rubber in the other four corners. So these dishes have been cut to uh, about 18 mil thickness. Now the other thing that we do is we use these um, uh, little moisture um, absorbent pouches. We just put a couple of them in each corner just to uh, assist with any uh, condensation or uh, humidity that might find its way in. Just as an extra measure. Now the next thing I'm going to do is modify the internal cable. Um, this is what one looks like that comes out of the, uh, the dish uh, when it's complete once we've removed it. And then what we do is we cut off uh, these pieces of um, rubber, which just keep them in place, and we take off the ferrite bead. So with uh, the later models of these dishes, the ferrite bead isn't just split. Uh, previously, it was a split bead and very easy to clip off. Um, now these are actually fed on, um, and the rubber on the outside is a little bit of an effort to get off, but uh, with a sharp pair of side cutters uh, and a Stanley knife, and, um, and patience, um, you can get them off. So we've already cut that one uh, to the rough length. It's going to allow us to pass this from the outside to the inside when it's finished. It will sit something like that and we'll use a little bit of thermal compound to hold that in place. So we're going to be putting a uh, RJ45, shielded RJ45 plug on this end. Now I'm not going to go through this, um, it's been covered off in um, a few other videos, so I'm just going to quickly fast forward this bit. Now, unlike with our uh, other terminations, we're not going to put the rubber boot um, on this end. Uh, when it goes inside here, uh, apart from not really needing it, uh, it's actually too big. Now, just to uh, reiterate, uh, as we do with all our terminations with Starlink, we follow the uh, the B standard, the T uh, six five eight B standard or five six eight B standard rather. 
Okay, now with the end terminated, we're going to feed it from the end through through the hole. Just going to pass that in, but we're not going to fit that off yet. Now we're going to take our IP68 uh, RJ45 socket and screw it in the threaded end here. So I like to put a little bit of rubber grease on this just to repel any water that is trying to get in. So just attach it to the RJ45 plug. Making sure at this stage we still haven't plugged it into the board because we want it to spin freely. Just being careful here not to cross thread. Just do that up as tight as you possibly can. Now, it does have a, uh, a rubber seal on the end, so to make sure that obviously that seal is on when you insert it. Right, from here we can plug it into the board. Just let that sit where it wants to sit. Now, we use this thermal compound glue, which we use uh, in our uh, star power uh, assemblies. So let's put a dot of that underneath, just a smidge on top, just to help hold that in place so it doesn't rattle around. Our next step is to insert the O-ring. So we have this on a roll. Uh, it's a four millimeter o-ring which we have two channels so use a little bit of this Loctite super glue just to give it a starting point just a little bit of an anchor just lay that in and just follow it around You don't want to stretch this as you lay it in, otherwise it will pull out on the corners. When you get to the end, just use your side cutters. And I like to go just a little bit past, maybe half a mil past, and just drop a bit of glue in the end again. And then I'll lay that in so it pushes in hard against. Now, with the inner side, I start at the opposite side. So where the join is, there's even less chance of any water ingress past the seals. Right, so next, uh, again with the rubber grease, this can be messy, but a little bit on each hole right in between. And what this does is, if any water finds itself down past the screw, it will just help repel it. Uh, being upside down, water is unlikely to want to travel uphill anyway, but with the uh, heating and cooling, the expansion and subtraction, uh, it will want to suck water in. So if it is completely uh, covered by uh, a wave, trench or rain, uh, whatever it may be, uh, it will rapidly cool and want to contract, therefore causing a vacuum inside and sucking water. So by doing this, there's even less chance of that happening. And lastly, just do one run right along, just to smear that a little. Just create that 
extra water repellent barrier. Just a little clean up. This red grease does show through quite easily. So Now lastly, the lid, so, uh, or rather base. So this is a five mil base. The idea is that it has very little flex. Uh, it does add uh, considerable weight, but it also adds uh, considerable strength. So with the countersinks facing up, just drop that in like that. Now, with these Torx head screws, one in each hole. Right now, just similar to doing up a, a wheel nuts, I like to do uh, every second one. I start with the corners and then just proceed roughly every second screw. And that's it. Finally, we ship our flat mounts with this UV resistant uh, 24AWG patch cable. Uh, we have several lengths. The most popular is our four and six meter. Uh, so as covered off in our other videos using this generation of coupler, uh, they are split rubber, quite simple to fit. So I won't go into detail. And that is now ready to test. So, from the top, that's how she looks. Um, 40 mil of thickness, about 400 mil wide, about 600 mil end to end, plus about uh, 70 mil of plug on the end. Uh, and that has been tested at the bottom of a pool, um, a two meter deep pool, for 24 hours, and uh, brought back up, reopened, and no water has managed to get in. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.